Hello and welcome to Eat Art Space, the pop-up gallery from a dining room in Appalachia. We are based in Johnson City, Tennessee, and I am Jocelyn Matthews, your host. In a few short minutes, I hope to connect with Yvonne Dalshin, who made the work that you see behind me. She is a photographer based out of Knoxville, and she has shared with us a delightful set of projects that she worked on during the pandemic. Um, namely one caught titled Contemplating Titan, um, which you see behind me. This is, um, we will get more into detail about this work, but a little bit about the gallery. So the Standing Room Gallery is a project that I started during the pandemic. Um, when everything was shut down, artists in my local region didn't have a place to sell their work because all of the galleries and the coffee shops and everywhere else was closed. So we started doing things virtually and now we've just continued on. There are artist receptions that I do host out of my house. Anybody is welcome to attend an RSVP. So um, do keep an eye out for our 2023 season and the coming year. So Yvonne should be joining us very shortly. I am waiting for her to arrive and we will add her to the conversation. In the meanwhile, if you have any questions for me about the gallery or the work that you see here, you can drop them in the comments and I will happily answer. So let's go on a little tour, shall we? So Yvonne, uh, her work is mostly photographic based and she has been paired with another local artist, an outsider artist called Steve Denton. I've linked to both of these artists in the various posts and you can also see their work on the website via the link in my bio. But Steve is a painter and Yvonne is primarily a photographer. So what I really like about putting these two together is that um, it gives you a sense of how color and medium and subject matter can be applied across multiple mediums. And um, it's just a very delightful, like for instance, I like seeing the colors between Steve's piece, Cat Got Drunk and Spilled the Wine, and Yvonne's series called Contemplating Titan. These are six by six photographs on metal. So they're super shiny. And um, I can take the liberty of saying that these were created using Yvonne's iPhone Peer, taking it and making it peer into the side of a supercomputer chip. Yvonne lives and uh, works and dwells and thrives near Oak Ridge, Tennessee. She and she was very quick to correct me when I when I dared to say Knoxville at the reception. Um, and she has just joined us. So let me add her and invite her to join us and tell us about. Just hit the button to accept, and hopefully both of us will be chatting very soon. Anyway, let's tour around and see some more work while she gets going. This is called Fog and Leaves. And these pieces are inkjet, archival inkjet prints that uh, were created using Photoshop filters. Hello, Yvonne. I've been chatting about you for a few minutes. Wow. It is so nice to see you. It is. I was just, I was looking at my laptop and it wouldn't show up. So I was like, I better check on my phone. So this is I'm it. so glad that you, <laughs> I'm so glad you popped in. So I was just giving the audience a little bit of background about you, um, that you live in Oak Ridge and that your work is photographic and taking a brief tour around the gallery. But I would love to actually invite you to speak about how you got into photography and, you know, your your background and what brought you to photography and then what your, I mean, photography is a giant medium, so what your little sub-interests are. Maybe touching on the larger project that I do not have in the gallery a little bit. Okay. Well, I don't know. The origin story is usually you get a camera for a birthday or something. I think mine was, I don't know, when I was nine or something, and I wanted to photograph kittens. And <laughs> they told me, oh, I couldn't use my flash cube. It was one of those plastic boxes with the flash cubes because they were in a barn and nobody wanted to see a fire in the barn. So I think that sort of got me off flash photography forever. <laughs> I know that's my excuse. That's my excuse why I don't do that any longer. And um, I don't know. Yeah. And then I just went with literature. So I studied comparative literature and just, I don't know, holiday pictures and stuff like that. But then we moved to Australia and all of a sudden I didn't work any longer. I was still doing some research, but I had more time. 
And so I, I just, and I got an SLR camera finally. And that's when and this I, is film, correct? Yeah, that was film. Okay. And um, but it was, it was. I mean, it, it got me sort of into into trying to see things a little bit more. And then, I mean, the big thing for me was 2006. We were living in Los Alamos, and I finally got a DSLR. Okay, and moving that, into digital. Yes, that was so. I mean, that was that was like, whoa! I can do anything I want now. It doesn't cost any money any longer. Well, the camera <laughs> costs, uh, the computer costs, uh, but you can take whatever pictures you want, and how many you want. And so I, I started to take um, a photography class, which was Los Alamos. So it was an astrophysicist. It was super technical. Uh, he was not interested in any of the things I wanted to know. I, it was more about learning lens, I don't know, whatever, and, and, and drawing diagrams of how the lens does something to and, and how, you, how you avoid and distortion. And that was a photography class. Mm -hmm. It was like a technical photography class. Okay, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. And then we moved to Oak Ridge, and um, there was the UT classes, and all of a sudden there were Photoshop classes, and finally I could do, I mean, you still had to do the portrait classes and the event photography and the nature and blah, 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 but there were Photoshop classes, and I just loved Photoshop, and I finally knew what I could do with this. And so I have, a, I have a point, let me interrupt with a question. Yep. So you were not, I mean, this work that's featured here, there's no people in it. So um, portraits, events, other people-oriented things, not your thing, or just maybe not this body of work? Events are okay. I do like to take pictures of people doing things. I just don't want to direct them, and I don't want to... I mean, I tried to for a while with all the activities my kids had, but it's just not me. I'm not comfortable with that. Okay. And so, yeah, I do have, I mean, I photograph for events and, and, and for groups that ask me. And so that's all for free anyway. And, but otherwise it is, yeah, no, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm interested in people, but it's more what they leave behind or where they go or the history or the buildings or the okay. track. That kind of thing. Okay. So, yeah. Continue yeah. on with the, you know. So you so found the Photoshop classes and then. I found the Photoshop classes. And I mean, just going back, I always wanted to paint or draw or something. I took many, many classes and I failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I really, really do like, I mean, I grew up with this whole um, expressionist art. Okay. Reiter, der blaue Reiter. So I really love those colors. I love the shapes. I love Can you them. explain where that comes from? Uh, well, I grew up near um, Düsseldorf, which okay. is where uh, Paul Klee was an academy director before they kicked him out. And then I lived in, near, well, here are Nazis, terrible people. And then the, the uh, then I lived in Munich and there's the Lehnbach House. I mean, the whole, like, Blauer Reiter, they, they were in Munich. So you had Franz okay. Mark and all these people. So they, they, I just loved it. I just love that stuff. It's okay. It's, so that in, do you feel that that informs your work now? I think it is this real love for bright primary colors and okay. those shapes. And then in some of their work, you, you really have these, it's almost these layers. It's, it's, it's if you see it, it's the abstraction is almost like there are lines going through where you think like, where does this even come from? It's, it's almost like they put something on top of something else. And Kandinsky is just crazy with his little marks that go everywhere. And mm -hmm. so I think I, yeah, I, I just love that. I love the abstraction and I love the colors. And so, and I like their intuitive style. I mean, they, they went out and they very often, I mean, obviously they, thought a lot about those things, but they could do these really, I mean, one of my favorites is Paul Klee and August Macke when they went to Tunisia and then this, this, they just did watercolors. Mm. And I just, I just love those so much. And <laughs> I tried watercolors, it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. No. 
so that's why Photoshop. All of a sudden, I can I can pretend to be an artist and maybe <laughs> I'm an artist. So yeah, I, I really I really enjoy that, and so yeah, that's where things like the I started with the conglomerates really, which are not in the show. They're not. No, but there will be one at the square in Johnson City. Oh, great. We get to see that. Okay. Folks who are local, you can actually come out tonight at 5 p.m. Yep. And see everything there. Yep. And I'll, I'll be leaving for Johnson City after this. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't figure out how to do it on the road or well, how, where. No, no. So, no, no, no. No. And so... Yeah, I mean, these were these were really iPhone pictures. I mean, that's another thing. When when I got my first iPhone, and all of a sudden you have a little camera, you you're not as as obvious, but also you have it with you all the time. Mm -hmm. so anywhere you go, I mean, and I'm as I said, I love sort of human impact, but not the human so much. So just parking lots or, or weird uh, weird color combinations when you have hydrants or something like that, or you see. Uh, I mean, the one on the square is is really somebody found, dropped, stole, whatever, a, a, a tile and countertop, um, what is that, the sample box and book. Huh. So there were really these color swatches and there were little, little, I don't know, little, little countertop material swatches and, 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 and bits. And they were just strewn all over the place. So you just walk around and snap pictures and then you go home and think like, oh, how can I combine this? And mm. I, that got me started. And then the colors of the foothills are similar in that. Yes. So I want to ask a little bit about um, and, and I know this is probably an annoying technical question, <laughs> as I say it. Um, you've talked about, dur during your artist talk in person here, you mentioned um, playing with the old filters and Photoshop. But I was actually curious about the contemplating Titan ones, like how much, how much of that color is just present inside of the supercomputer chip? And how much of it is something that you've coaxed out? Does that matter? You don't have to answer it if you feel like you want to keep your secrets. Um, <laughs> but I'm curious about what role, um, obviously you, you enjoy and you, you gravitate towards color. So there's a discovery process, but how does that discovery process, trans does that happen when you're manipulating it? Well, with the colors, definitely. Okay. Because, I mean, I, I went out and I, I looked for the colors that, that I started in the fall. So you have all these leaf colors and then you were almost like, well, what will the colors be in, in winter when you have mm -hmm. white and blacks and things? And, and in the spring when all of a sudden these greens. I'm looking colors. around to try and see, okay, we've got a winter one behind us and I've got some summer ones. As you're talking, I can talk. Yeah. Keep going. This is but, spring. Yeah. So there's spring and summer. Yeah. And then there's the winter one over here. Yeah. And then I think there's a bread one with the snow, but, it, but with the Titan ones, it was really interesting because I didn't have to. Oh, it, you just hold this. Ah, I should have brought it up. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I cleaned up. Yeah, I think it's downstairs. But it, it really is this little little metal box with little metal separators in there. And you just hold it, you hold it towards the light in different places where there are different colors. And all of a sudden you get these funky, uh, yeah, really, really funky. Um, if really funky colors and effects. And colors, and that wasn't, very much, I mean, you clean it up a little bit because there's some dust and little bits in there that shouldn't be, but it's not as intensified as you would think. So th those were really, really the colors that, that all of a sudden showed up. And hmm. that made it so, I mean, that was really obsessive where you went like, well, what does it look if I hold it in front of this? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did a whole series, I don't know, with 
soccer games. I mean, they, they came out a little bit weird, so they aren't included in that one. But mm-hmm. it, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed just, and I enjoy when the camera shows you things that you don't see with your eye. Oh, that's an interesting way of thinking about it. Because so many photographers are like trying to represent, especially documentary photographers, right? Yeah. They're like showing reality, even though they're filtering it in some way. It's, but you're like discovering things that the camera is doing. Yeah. And, and I, I think because I've lived, I mean, my husband is a physicist, so I've been sort of on these, on these, so sort of looking at science and technology from the very much from the outside i have no clue but there is something about all this it, it's like photoshop it's this computer manipulation i'm i'm i i don't want to pretend that there isn't technology involved here there is mm-hmm. the camera there is i i don't remember any of these lens things but obviously there is distortion and I, I very much, I, I resist when photographers tell me, well, this is reality and you should show reality. And I'm like, it's not reality. You framed it. You've already used a certain lens. You might do things that you don't tell us. So it's your version already. So, okay. yeah. So don't, I mean, that's, and then you have the other people who, who go all out. I mean, all the people with their little Holger cameras and their little broken cameras and the lens baby people. I mm-hmm. mean, it, <laughs> so it, it's fun. And I think everything is allowed. But yeah, well, can you talk about how this thinking informs your long form project that is connected to Oak Ridge? Give me give me some background on that. I mean, maybe this maybe this is a completely different thread but let's 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 uh, spin that one out a little bit unspool it well i i have lived in los alamos for 10 years and in oak ridge for 10 years now and it's all cities that were created for the manhattan project so it's and they they never let you forget it because (laughs) there are the museums and there are the historical pictures and there is a lot of pride sometimes not necessarily yeah (laughs) i don't know yeah it it, it is problematic and especially for somebody from germany who who really i grew up in the 80s i was against nuclear power Uh, we were definitely against any of those nuclear missiles that the americans were trying to push on us and the russians were pointing at us so yeah there would it's it's a bit ironic that I ended up living in these places <laughs> and so and this the kind of very gung-ho propaganda and and sometimes quite a historical patriotism that is going on has been sort of urging me for quite a while mm. and um so when I finally had the time and it was really when COVID started that I, I, yeah, it was, can't go anywhere, no vacations. Yeah, okay. So I, I really went and, and looked for all these places in Oak Ridge. And then we have the local, the local photographer of the Manhattan Project, Ed Westcott, fabulous photographer. Um, I, I've met him a couple of times, but it was always after his stroke, so he couldn't speak any longer. Mm. Um, but his his photography is phenomenal, but it also is obviously photography that was um, he was paid for by the government to make it. So coming back to the real realism re, re, realism, yeah, so it's it's this whole, oh yeah, it's it's purely documentary. No, obviously it is not. <laughs> <laughs> there is an agenda, there is, we want to show how happy and glorious these people live with the bomb and, and producing it. And obviously, yeah, the kids are fine. So it, it's all, yeah. And so I started to combine these pictures with the things that I saw. And it started with just this, this contrast of how, well, 
one of the big uranium enrichment facilities, K25, is completely torn down now. But there is this entrance building that is still there. And, and you mm. look, it's completely run down. And you, you think, that, well, at some point, 100,000 people worked here and they walked through. And, and that's when this whole idea of the ghosts of the Manhattan Project started. And so that that has been developing and it's still developing because I'm, I'm still, yeah, I'm still trying to tell the story and it's because there's so much mm -hmm. Start with the Manhattan Project. And then all of a sudden you have the Cold War and, and then all of a sudden it's, it's now. I mean, <laughs> so much now with what is Russia doing? Should we get, uh, is, isn't our nuclear powered reactors, is that an answer to climate change? So it, it's, I feel I, I'm not quite done with that. And mm -hmm. I've, I've shown them some in some places, but not really as a coherent show yet. Well, what, what is your favorite, can you, can you describe verbally your favorite image from that project or the one that you feel is the most successful or meaningful to the audience here so that they can at least get a sense of it and then later explore it on your website? <laughs> well, my favorite for the longest time was really the first one I did, which was um, the entrance building of K25 with all its abandoned, dusty, dirty, spiderweb covered things on the inside, the lockers, the tables. And it was photographed from the outside through these round, round little windows that they have or had before everything was um, boarded up where you sort of showed your badge and 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 so that was one and then i put the pictures from ed westcott that have people walking into k25 so they are really historical workers from the 1940s tons of them just walking in and I put them sort of on the, on the margins where the round thing isn't any longer. Mm -hmm. And then it, they were black and white images and I applied a texture that is sort of showing this decay. It's, it's almost introducing not just black and white, but some, some reds and greens and sepia. So it has this, this nostalgic feeling. So, you know, this is something that I'm, creating in a way mm -hmm. so nobody should be confused that this is reality i mean obviously there are no ghosts <laughs> <laughs> that connects back to the like you know yeah. no. and, and, we're, and we're the manipulating ghost. this let's all admit it <laughs> yeah no and, and the ghosts, they, they really i think i even swapped them into an, a negative mode so you see them white on black and then you have mm. textured splotches on them so it's this whole idea of, of nostalgia and stories we tell and, and, and then another one that I really like was one of the, one of the buildings that was in the process of being um, demolished, but they left the, the, the foundation and the foundation had this black thing that you're supposed to have on it. So humidity doesn't go in, but it was all splotchy and, and, and broken off. And so you had these really thick black paint layers that were peeling off so hmm. a picture of that. And then I found a picture of one of the Hiroshima survivors showing off his scars. I don't know, probably 10 years after the war. And I just layered these just to, to talk about scars and, and, and how we are not really looking at them and not touching them and, and mm. but how they are present. So it, those are two that I really like. Mm -hmm. What, what stuck out to me as I was listening to you talk was that, um, I actually think that you're making good use of your comparative literature background <laughs> in the midst of this project. Because you're talking about the stories that we're telling about these things and you're comparing this, as you say it, propaganda angle with what you are observing now um, in the midst of these, um, this whole story through that Ghost of the Manhattan Project. It's really quite fascinating to think about how that just connects back to um, that you're making these observations and you might be tapping into that. <laughs>
I mean, it, it's a bit, sometimes it's a little bit hindering because I feel like I have to do a lot of research. <laughs> so I see. And, and, and then all of a sudden gets all very complicated. And then you tend to go, oh, should I have it in chronological order? And then I, I talked to some photo editors and they were like, oh, no, you shouldn't never, ever, ever. And they all go with the visual. And I was like, but that's wrong. I know this is happening here. And, this is and they're like, no, you just have to forget all of that. Hmm. So sometimes it's a little bit, yeah, you, you, you sort of. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a giant story. And different people are going to want to take different things from it. So it sounds like a very unwieldy project. Yeah. But a worthwhile one. <laughs> yeah. No, that's why I really enjoy these colorful things where you can just go out and play. Mm -hmm. So they are mm -hmm. just, they're easier and they are fun. And you, you sort of have a feeling once they are over, then you lose interest. And okay, let's find something else. Mm hmm. Yeah, but that's the purpose, right? Do, do you have any other fun play things that you've discovered and that you're actively working on right now? Are you waiting for the next hit of inspiration? <laughs> um, well, right now, because I did a long road trip to California with my son, I'm, I'm sort of, I was thinking I would do, oh, landscapes or something, but once again, it's the ghosts that, that sort of come to me because we went to Los Alamos. We saw mm. National Museum for Nuclear Energy. Um, we, we went to a test site in Nevada. So all of a sudden it's like, wow, this is everywhere. So <laughs> Man, it just like inserted itself. Into <laughs> yes, it did. In Moab, there's a, there's a uranium mining super fun site. And, and oh, oh, this is familiar. This is DOE. These are all these radioactive signs. I photograph them forever. <laughs> Here they are again. Yeah. So, so there, there went this whole, oh, yeah, no, I should really do some nature and, and enjoy the blue sky. And I was like, oh, there is... In Albuquerque, they even have a replica of the of the of the tower for the gadget at Trinity sites. So I would instead of blue sky, I did the bomb. <laughs> Do you find that if you're if you're out in the world, is it hard to to bounce between those two things? Do you? I mean, because you're saying instead of you know, well, so I'm asking about I, I if it's a hindrance. No. Mm. Not really, because no. I, mean, I, I took a lot of other things too, but mm -hmm. I, it, it's hard because I'm not really a pure landscape photographer. So I look at them and I think, I've seen better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so what, what kind of, and it's not really my, I mean, that's another thing with being sort of stuck in a place and, and, and working on this place. It was really interesting to see how, those were not my places. So you feel like, oh yeah, I'm coming through, beautiful things, let's snap at them. But there is no, no real story. And, and mm. I feel like, yeah, they, they are nice to post somewhere and say, hey, look what I saw. But they are not really material to, for, a, for a series or something. Hmm. Except for the ones where it's were like, ooh, the Manhattan Project is still everywhere. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying there. So, so you, you definitely seem to have just like a category of how you approach what, what types of material you're actively looking for yeah. out in the world. So, well, that's really, that's really neat. Do, um, who else besides Paul Klee, Kandinsky, that art movement, are there any other um, contemporary artists, maybe living artists who continue to inspire and encourage you that you think that we should look at? Oh, I'm so bad with names. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But yeah, there, there are. I'm really bad with names and I don't even have my book with me. No, but there are, there are I mean, obviously, um, everybody dreams of taking pictures like Richard Mizrak, who, who makes bomb craters and, and, and missiles sticking out of the desert look like beautiful, beautiful landscapes. <laughs> so that's definitely somebody. And then there is, um, sadly he's dead, Patrick Nakatami. He did a whole, I think I, that's the right name. He did a whole 
project about the land of enchantment and how the whole radioactive industry is there. And he did, and that was before digital. He mm -hmm. really made these collages and, and they, are, they are fabulous. Mm, okay. Um, but there, there are so many and there are, I've just gotten into photo books and how people try to tell stories with completely disjointed things. Hmm. I tend, I mean, just starting with this whole project and series idea, I, I tend to then just go on and on and on and on and try the same things. But then when you want to present them, all of a sudden it's like, well, why don't I mix Titan and the ghosts? And, but I'm, that's something I'm just starting to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. Um, I think we've entered into the portion of recognition. Who do you want to give some shout outs to with regard what? to your work and, your, and um, other people who've helped you along the way? Well, definitely my husband, Thomas. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, he's my, my financier. He's my, he lets me go off for long times and things like that. Um, then, I mean, definitely the Arts and Culture Alliance in Knoxville. They have awarded me some grants that paid for oh, wonderful. a camera a couple of years ago and a residency where I printed things for the first time myself and so that helped a lot and um i mean they have they have all these calls and so i've been in some of the some of the exhibitions and so that is that they are just great and then mm -hmm. obviously susan patrice because um when they started the whole kinship and six feet project two years ago three years mm -hmm. ago and then now the kinship project i i Con I mean, online, this whole Zoom community where you all of a sudden talk to people that you've never heard of, you've never seen, and they are all so helpful, and you are in these practice groups. So, And this is a primary, just for the audience, this is primarily a photographic pro practice group. Yeah. And Kinship Photography, the base is in North Carolina, yep. in the United States. So, yep. but it's, it's not limited to that geographic area. No, no, because so. everything is on, on, on Zoom. So if you have time, go to their kinship photography website and they have artist talks on Wednesdays and they sometimes have these practice groups. And we've had people who work in all sort of, I mean, it's mostly photography based, but some are working on sculptures and, 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 and crocheting and, and printing on things I didn't even know you could print on. So. <laughs> <laughs> So it can be pretty wide range, wide ranging. It's yeah, but it's an art artistic practice group is the emphasis. Yeah, and they yeah. have fabulous speakers on all sorts of topics. So that that really widened my horizon. So oh, that's wonderful. So kudos to Susan for putting that community together. Yeah. So is there, are there any other like upcoming events or exhibits that you would like to share with the audience before we close? Um, <sighs> really know well there's the johnson city there's yours <laughs> definitely <laughs> yeah come by the gallery everything's for sale on the website and you can just like walk around my dining room and pick something to take home yeah <laughs> and 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 yeah look at steve denton so his stuff is fabulous too um, <laughs> yes um i, I don't know that they, they are well there is Tomorrow, the grand opening of the Head-On Photo Festival in Australia. I won't be there, but some of my <laughs> ghosts are on a screen in a gallery in Redfern. So if you happen to be in Sydney or the surrounding area, but you can also go on the Head-On Photography Festival website because that's where the project is as well. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where you just go very, very far away to show something where you're not quite sure yet how people around you will react. <laughs> well, I mean, hopefully you'll get some really good feedback from that. And then you can say that you've had work on two sides of the world at the same time. I know. I know. So I, that, that should be a selling point. And then maybe I'll at some point really approach places in the area and say, hey, I have these Ghosts of the Manhattan Project. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think it's going to be be wonderful. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for taking a little lunch break with me. It's an honor to have your work in the gallery. And um, I'm very excited. I will be I will actually be briefly at the reception tonight. 
Okay. Um, and then I've got to go do some, do some errands immediately after. <laughs> so <laughs> you know all about needing to be in multiple places at the same time, um, which was not a thing during the pandemic when we were doing this. So <laughs> no, I know that is it's just fabulous because yeah, it helps. Yeah. <laughs> just look at all that's happened. Well, Yvonne, thank you for sharing your work with the world. I look forward to seeing where the Ghosts of the Manhattan Project goes. And for everybody viewing, either now or later, please stop by the gallery through November 30th. Um, you can send me a message through Instagram or through my website to come visit and purchase work through either the website or in person. And um, please go follow Yvonne and check out her website. We will be talking with Steve Denton, having a replay of Steve Denton probably next week, um, where I'm actually going to go to his studio because he had connectivity issues last time. So I'll be letting everybody know when to tune in for that. Anyway, All right. thanks, Yvonne. And um, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, two and a half hours drive, right? <laughs> But Listen yeah. to something awesome on the way, and then it will be better. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still only halfway through the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, well then, that's a what? That's an adventure. You go into the hills. It sounds perfect. So yeah. <laughs> well, we have um, some audience comments. Somebody said, "Wow, wonderful!" and they're thanking you for being here. So I think um, I I hope that that's a piece of encouragement for you moving forward. And I'll see you later this evening. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Yvonne. Bye.